welcome to my channel, Joyce's Affordable Glam Life 360, or just Joyce. Today is Unsolved Mystery Thursday, and this mystery is about the Coral Castle in Florida. The question is, is this an engineering marvel? So if you would like to know what the mystery is all about of the Coral Castle in Florida, keep on watching. The construction of the Coral Castle remains one of Florida's greatest unsolved mysteries. It is hard to explain how a 100 pound man who was just over five feet tall was able to move, carve, and manipulate more than 1,000 tons of coral. So the question and the mystery is, had he mastered the skills of the pyramid builders like he claimed, or was there black magic involved as others have wondered. In the early 1900s, Lativia native Ed Leedskinlinen, Le <laughs> in the early 1900s, Lativia native Ed Leedskinlinen was set to marry the love of his life, Agnes Skuvist. She was just 16 at the time. She was also 10 years younger than her husband-to-be, Edward. Agnes called off the wedding the day before the festivities. This forced Edward Leedskillen to move to the United States alone. Agnes re remained in Lativia, Lativa, and Leedskillen spent the rest of his life building a monument to their love. So this is kind of a, a very sad uh, love story um, in a way. So... <laughs> Um, I kind of, when I was reading about this and researching, I was, I really felt bad for Edward, um, in everything that I read. So he, so. he built this monument in the love that he had for this woman, Agnes. In 1923, um, Edward began creating the Coral Castle. At the time, it was called Rock Gate Park. It was a patch of land that was underdeveloped um, that he decided to purchase in Florida City, which is located near uh, the Miami, the Miami Dade County, I think is how you say it. Dade County is what I'm pretty sure how you say it, the county, but it's near Miami. So Edward was born in Stamarina Parish, Lativia, on January 12th, 1887. He, he was actually a very, a very sickly boy. And he spent many of his days in bed reading books. Um, really quickly, I wanted to, um, I haven't been put posting in my description box the makeup that I've been wearing, so um, I'm going to try and do it this time, but I'm also going to um, just let you know really quick what I'm using, um, and what I'm using are these e.l.f. These are their uh, bite-sized um, eyeshadow palettes, so you get the four, and um, I bought, they're only $3 each. I mean, you can't go wrong. And they, they have a really good uh, pigment and they blend really well. So um, this one is in pumpkin pie. And that's what I'm using on my eyes today. Edward came from a very poor uh, family. And um, he only had, uh, they say he only had a fourth grade uh, education up to a fourth grade education right. most of his education so he he went to school up to fourth grade but most of his education actually came from uh it actually came from his in his own independent study so reading all these books and so forth he learned a lot which i believe you can do you don't have to go to school and um learn all of this in my opinion uh well i mean you have to go to school of course yeah right 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 but i also believe like even now i'm still learning i'm still reading i'm researching mysteries and what have you and i'm i always feel like i want to be a sponge where i absorb as much information as i can get so um i believe you can learn a lot from your own independent study 
when Edward became of age, his father decided to take him under his wing and teach him this, uh, teach him stonemasonry. And then uh, when Edward, after um, all this went down with Agnes and they decided, well, she decided to call everything off and he decided, okay, I'm leaving, I'm going to the United States. Um, he arrived in New York City where he moved to the Pacific Northwest. And this is where he found work in the lumber industry. As an ex handler in the manufacturing in Reedsport, Oregon. And in the winter of 1922, Edward contracted tuberculosis, which was aggravated by the cold, damp Oregon we weather. Edward then moved to Florida to seek out a more curative, warmer uh, climate. Here, he started construction is where he started construction on what he called Rockgate, or what they call Rockgate. It was not clear if he termed the name Rockgate or if that was that was the name given further down the line. So I'm not positive on that. A massive, so this Rockgate is a massive structure that took him over 20 years to construct. I mean, that takes a lot of dedication, doesn't it? Oof. And what's so mysterious about this is that he worked primarily at night. And if people walked by, he would stop working until they were further enough away. So that makes me wonder, like, why? What are you hiding? Just saying. So he carved out over 1,100 tons of what they call oolite limestone. And this would, would be what would eventually be called the Coral Castle. Once the structure was completed, he dedicated the structure to the girl, Agnes, who broke his heart so many years before. I mean, it's just sad. Like, he would do all of this and make things in his broken heart um, to this woman who broke his heart. I just find it so sad. And in a way, never able to really move on from it. Edward used cruel tools that um, were made from salvaged lumber and automobile parts and to move and carve mammoth blocks of stone. Since he worked at night under low light, he was able to keep most of his construction methods a mystery. So like I said, so even if people walked by, he would stop, he would stop working. Um, until they were further enough away. Why? Why would he do that? Why Why didn't he want people to know? I'm just asking. I, I, I don't have the answer to it. I'm just wondering why he decided that he didn't want anyone to know what he was doing. So there was one night that two teens happened upon Edward as he was working. And he they told the police that the rocks had been levitating in mid-air like hydrogen balloons, is what they said. And there are some who suggest that he used a form of anti, an anti-gravity device to build the castle. Numerous designs have been suggested for this device, some using magnetism and numerous other proposals. Lead Scalin, Lead Scalinen, I'm going to just call him Edward because that last name is so hard for me to say. Um, named that he knew the secret of the Egyptian pyramids. And there are those who believed he used those secrets to assemble the structure he has been quote that he assembled. And Edward himself has been quoted to say, quoted to say, I have discovered the secrets of the pyramids and have found out how the Egyptians and the ancient builders in Peru, Yucatan, and Asia, with only primitive tools, raised and set in place blocks of stone weighing many tons. Edward was said to be a student of the universe. Much of the Coral Castle site is, collab is collaborated to celestial alignments. Since Edward believed that the entire universe was made of magnets, that he flowed in and out of the earth and through all objects, he could use that force 
to manipulate matter to his advantage. So rumors still persist that Edward used special magnetic currents or that he cast hollow blocks. And there are others who um, say that his property sits on a vortex or that he possessed supernatural abilities such as levitation. What could really be being ignored here is the fact that a single human with an unwavering focus and a sufficiently powerful motivation can accomplish anything they set their mind to. Mid 1930s, Edward had the entire structure and nobody understands why. He moved it to its present location in Homestead, Florida. There, it resumed its life as a roadside attraction. On November 9th, 1951, Edward checked himself into the Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. He uh, left a sign, before he left, he left a sign on the door um, that read, going to the hospital. Uh, he suffered a stroke 28 days later um, in which he died of a kidney infection. The Coral Castle is a sculpture garden that is fashioned from colossal coral chunks. There is a 28 ton obelisk that soars 40 feet in the air. Is that how you say it? Obelisk? Obelisk? There is an elaborate uh, thorn throne room with matching his and her thrones and an 18,000 pound gate that is balanced so perfectly a child's touch could swing it open. In 1918, he began excavating the rock below the soil. He fashioned everything from a bedroom that was complete with a child's crib, cradle, to a 30 foot tall, 60,000 pound coral telescope. Edward moved to his new property in Homestead, Florida. He excavated additional gigantic sections of coral and erected literally a castle. The castle was complete with lookout walls and forlorn but breezy turret. This is where Edward slept. Composed of sedimentary rock, which are layers of coral shells and other materials that uh, harden over time, uh, walking through Coral Castle, you can see Edward's hopes and dreams that were encrusted with disappointment. So again, a very broken heart from this woman who he loved. Edward made a rocking chair that was made of rock. And the chair was actually able to pivot. Although it is able to pivot, it is stony and uncomfortable. A shell-coated bathtub that is beautiful, but it is described as a cheese grater. So the bathtub is beautiful, but rough, rough like a cheese grater. There is an unbreakable feast, they call it Feast of Love Table, and a heart-shaped slab surrounded by chairs, chairs, but has always been empty of food and never used. What is ironic is that large portions of the rock, so what is ironic is that the large portions of rock, the dolomite, reflects his heart as a fossil. So after Edward's death, there was a, uh, there was a search of the property and what was uncovered was $3,500, which was the result of decades of charging tourists 10 cents a mission to, to, see, to see his marvel, to see his, his castle. When they went and searched the property, they, they found the $3,500, but they did not find a will. The castle passed to Edward's closest living re relative in the United States, and he was a nif um, his, his nephew that was from Michigan, and his name was Harry. Harry was also in poor health, just like Edward was. So he decided to sell the castle and he sold a castle to, the, to an Illinois family in 1953. 
The land after they purchased it was then purchased by a retired Chicago jeweler named Julius Levin. Uh, Julius has kept the Coral Castle a roadside attraction. Since 1981, it has been the property of Coral Castle Inc. and it remains to this day. In 1986, a uh, large stone gate that was meticulously balanced on its axle, so the gate that I was talking about before that they said a child's touch could just swing it open, um, that, that, uh, that broke. So six men and a 50-foot crane were required to move the stone gate. Once removed, engineers saw that Edward had drilled a hole through the stone and inserted a metal shaft which then rested on an old truck bearing. The gate stopped revolving because the bearing had rusted. So the crew replaced the gate back in place. Uh, the gate failed again and had to be replaced. So a second time after this first time. And as of today, the gate does not open as well as it did when Edward had done it himself. As of now, it seems no one will ever be able to replicate Edward's methods. Maybe he knew of some extraterrestrial secrets, or maybe it's just incredible. Or maybe it's just what people can do with a broken heart. You know, it's like those people who lift things or are full of so much adrenaline and they lift things that they never thought they could. I don't know, maybe it's something like that. Edward wrote a book in 1944 about his knowledge of the blueprints of his of all creation. The cover of his book, Edwards um, put a clue to the blueprint of nature's two magnetic currents that are the base of all structure and creation in our universe. Edward knew about the ancient science of sacred geometry, which represents the knowledge of the two magnetic currents and the neutral particles of matter that orbit as a common core. The code clue has been left behind by many ancient cult cultures, such as golden ration, pi, flower of life, and time measurement. This clue of the two magnetic currents that Ed put on the Edward put on the cover of his book is the key to opening one of the most sought after mysteries of the world. These two magnetic currents. Edward showed every indication of being a natural, uh, they call it a G Manser one, who senses the unique telluric forces of earth. He was highly intuitive and knew how to observe nature for signs of anomaly. This led him to the discovery of vortex energy and the ability to harness the natural element, elements of magnetism. His work demonstrates that there is no such thing as an electron or an electron cloud. An electron cloud is caused by a disturbance of the steady state nucleus of an atom by bombarding it with neutrons or individual magnetism, magnets. In the used methods and techniques of atomic observation, the formula of all energy and other and matter includes every single thing that exists, including including you. The two individual magnetic cur currents, two magnetic currents that were on that is on Edward's book cover shows the simplicity in these two currents that will blossom into glorious complexity that becomes a print of our universe and its base form of energy and how its very elastic magnetic current tentacles stretch out in vortex motions. It is the construction and destruction process within the fabric of creation. Edward said that science's, science's theory that energy is concealed when positive and negative connect is false. He states that only the north and south whirling against each other can run they run in a screw-like twisting motion. Vortex motions are throwing out individual north and south magnets, and the magnets that are lost are instantly replaced. North and south 
come back to their own kind of magnet, rejoining the individual perpetual orbits. The metal is not the magnet substance. It is just holding more magnets flowing through it than other things. Magnetic currents flow through metal easier than the air. Man Magnetic energy flows through everything, but each and everything allows different amounts of it. So the Coral Castle is about a 30 minute drive southwest of Miami. Um, they say to expect to stay about 60 to 90 minutes. And um, I read that it is recommended to go or to avoid very hot, humid days uh, for the fact that uh, the castle's open air design could make the trip uncomfortable. But he wants to visit this uh, castle. Um, there you go. Actually, um, last June, um, my husband and I, we went to Florida and I wish I had known about this castle because I would have wanted to go visit. So now I know. So next time when we go, I'm going to see if we can go visit. So that is the mystery of the Coral Castle that is in Florida. And I found this upon reflection. Um, I found it, I kind of found it really sad and depressing because Edward f was forced forced to leave uh, his home um, and then came to the United States with a very broken heart and seemed to never recover from that broken heart. And he made this beautiful castle, which is, I mean, I've seen pictures of it and so forth, and it is beautiful, but it goes to show what can happen when we do have a broken heart. And Again, he did it all at night, so people didn't see what he was doing, except these two individuals, two teenagers who said it looked like the stones were levitating. So, you know, do with that what you may or uh, what you think uh, happened there. Um, so I just, you know, again, he wrote a book. He says he understood what, how the pyramids were built and how these ancient civilizations were able to do what they did. Um, but again, he went far, but he didn't go so far as to really tell us exactly how he did it. So there's the mystery in itself. So what do we think? Do we think it's because he had a broken heart and he was focused and, you know, it's like those people who are under stress and have all this adrenaline and they lift things or do things that they normally wouldn't have done in the past? Or... Did he discover some sort of vortex that his property was on? You know, the mystery is there. So comment below and let me know what you think. It was a very interesting story and I enjoyed researching this one. Um, just again, for the sheer fact of how did he do it? <laughs> and because it was a sad romance story, really. It's a sad it's a sad romance story. So if you enjoyed this mystery of the coral reef, please hit the thumbs up. It helps me out. If you are not subscribed to my channel, will you please consider subscribing to my channel? And if you already are subscribed to my channel, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your love and support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.